Hey everybody, welcome back to Swift Lessons. To go along with my Fender Strat giveaway, today let's learn a little bit from the king of the Stratocaster, the legend himself, Jimi Hendrix. Together we're going to be learning his top five definitive riffs. We're going to be doing uh, Foxy Lady, Purple Haze, Voodoo Child Slight Return, of course, Hey Joe, and also Red House. And to get Jimmy's signature tune, I'm using the Spark Amplifier from Positive Grid, and using their Jimi Hendrix suite of effects, I'm using the Axle Fuzz Boost. Okay, so let's jump in, tune down a half step, and get started. Okay, close look at the fretboard of this Fender Stratocaster. Remember everybody, you can head over to swiftguitar.com slash giveaways for the chance to win a beautiful Fender Stratocaster with black finish and maple fretboard. Now, let's get started with riff number one, Foxy Lady. It's gonna look and sound like this. A one, two, three, four, and... Okay, breaking that down, if you're listening to the original recording, you'll notice that this song is not actually tuned down a half step. But when playing live, Hendrix was almost always tuned down. So to capture his live energy and feel, we're gonna learn all these riffs today tuned down a half step. So this song actually begins with a little bit of vibrato. Hendrix gathering some feedback by playing the 11th fret of the G string in F sharp notes. From there, he's gonna jump into this first phrase. Okay, so we're picturing an F sharp minor blues scale. Probably the most important scale for rock and blues. All right, we're starting on the second fret of the low E string. We're gonna play it twice, F sharp. Followed by five and five on the B string in the high E. Then a dead stroke up as we head to another F sharp note, fourth fret of the D string, twice. All right, followed by another five and five on the B and high A, and another dead stroke. He put that together and we have a measure of music. All right, next, into the next measure we're gonna play. All right, so that was F sharp again, twice. A dead stroke, then a bluesy walk up. All right, that's two measures of music right there. You put them together and we have. Okay, into the next phrase, it's gonna look and sound like this. All right, so we added a little descending line there. So same thing, starts off the same. But then he's gonna play two on the D string, open A, and then second fret of the low E string, I like to use my thumb. Followed by the dead stroke, and then that bluesy walk up again. All right, right there we have four measures of music. You put them together and we have, real slow. Okay, very good everybody. Now moving on to riff number two, Purple Haze. In this riff, Hendrix is using multiple positions of the minor blue scale or minor pentatonic scale, depending upon how you want to look at it. He's got pentatonics here in the key of A. And he has the, what we call the A position of the minor pentatonic scale. Okay, the riff is gonna look and sound like this. One, two, three, four, and... Okay, so that actually began out of key. 
He's playing octaves, sixth fret of the low E string and eighth fret of the D string. Just alternate it. From there, he's gonna jump into his first phrase. All right, utilizing that minor pentatonic scale in A shape position, key of E. Sliding up to the ninth fret of the D string, seventh fret G, slight bend on the eighth fret B string, and then to the seventh fret of the D string with some vibrato. All right, now on to the next phrase we're gonna play. All right, so that was fifth fret of the D string. You can slide in if you like. Then open D, open low E string, and then sliding up to the E note that we have right here on the seventh fret of the A string. All right, you put those two phrases together and we have, starting off with the octaves. All right, that repeats. All right, then we're gonna slide away 12th fret low E string and play. All right, so the slide away, then we're sliding up to the seventh fret of the A string. Five on the D, up to seven, bend, and then vibrato fifth fret of the D string. All right, then we have another response to this melody we're gonna play. All right, that was fifth fret of the D string. Open A, then open E, and then we're gonna grab the third fret of the low E string and vibrato. So far you have. Response. Repeat. Slide away. And descend. Okay, then after that third fret low E string, we're gonna finish up and play. Okay, so that was a slide away, 15th fret low E string, followed by the open A string. Then we have this phrase. All right, I slid up to the seventh fret of the A string, five on the D, bend on the seventh fret, and then slide up right to that same fret. Okay, so coming out of the last phrase. All right, then we're gonna finish up. All right, so that was five on the D string, open D. All right, next we're back in that main uh, A-shaped box. All right, slid up to the ninth fret of the D string. Seven on the G, twice, and then up a full step. All right, from there, just some open strings, and a typical Hendrix slide away on the 12th fret low E string. All right, put that last part together and we have. And the entire riff should sound like this. Repeat. Very good, everybody. Now moving on to riff number three, Voodoo Child. Now this is one of those riffs that I always played wrong when I was performing live, or at least I played it my own way. But I've taken the time to really figure out which notes he's playing. All right, so it's gonna look and sound like this. All 
Okay, so here he's basically using the same pentatonic boxes that he used for Purple Haze. <laughs> Taking this measure by measure, measure one looks and sounds like this. All right, so I'm on the seventh fret of the G string, hammering up a full step, a dead stroke, then the D string, seven to nine with the hammer, and then back to the G string. So far you have. All right, next we're gonna play. All right, that was the fifth fret of the D string with a slight bend. Repeat the five, then hammer pull with some vibrato before going to the seventh fret of the A string to finish the measure. All right, you put that measure together and we have. All right, then the response to that, the next measure we're gonna play. All right, so that was the hammer. Back to seven. Nine on the D. Nine on the G. And then a pull off. All right, following that, we're gonna have two dead strokes to finish the measure. All right, you put that together, we have. And putting measures one and two together. Okay, from there he's gonna repeat measure number one. Before playing. All uh, right there, that's one of the bits that I always used to mess up. It's a part that most players make more complicated than it needs to be. He's just playing seven up to nine with a hammer. Open G. And then seven with a slight bend. And then up to nine. Now you'll notice that he kind of throws in these very, very slight bends on a lot of these notes to add a little bit of flavor. Just a very minor detail. Okay, now all of that is gonna repeat. Then right there, he's gonna move up to the 14th fret position. All right, you bent it up, returned, then go to the 12th fret of the G string, and then from there, if I'm listening to the original track, I think I hear him sliding on the 14th fret of the D string, but I like to slide on the low E string, it just sounds a little bit more robust, and I think that's what he does live. Sliding into the open position, key of E. Okay, very well done everybody. Now jumping into riff number four, the intro to Hey Joe. Now this is a very short musical idea, only three measures in length, but it still manages to demonstrate Hendrix's ability to play classic blues stuff while baking in a little bit of that groundbreaking psychedelia. It's gonna look and sound like this. One, two, and... Okay, so there in measure one, we're getting started with a classic blues lick. Looks and sounds like this. Real slow. All right, so I'm picturing the minor blues scale in the open position. And the upper extension where I'm getting started. Simply slide in from the third fret of the B string up to the fifth fret, letting the open high E string drone. Then with my index finger going back down to three, still letting the E string drone. All right, then we're gonna slide down fourth fret of the G string, down to two, and pulling off to zero. So far you have. All right, then to finish up, all right, to finish up that measure, we're hammering on to the second fret of the D string. You put that together and we have a classic blues lick. And at full speed, make sure you can count it. One, two, and. All right, now, looking into the next measure, we're gonna play. All right, so very simple. I'm taking an E major chord, hitting the bass note, strumming through, and then back to the bass. 
Next, I'm gonna grab some octaves, the fourth fret of the A string, sixth fret of the G, slide it up a half step, make sure that the D string is muted. Next, I'm going to flatten my finger, so that way I'm voicing the fifth fret of the D string, and I'm gonna play bass, down, bass, down, moving that back a half step. You put that measure together and we have, Now the rhythm of those notes is very, very important. So make sure that you get that into your ear. All right, then into the next measure we're gonna play. Okay, so now I'm fretting the second fret of the A string, second fret of the D string, that's barred, and I have the fourth fret of the G string. Including my low E string, I'm gonna play. Strum, strum. Beats. All right, from there I'm gonna block that low E string with my thumb and play. Okay, so I'm barring the D string, G string, and B string, seventh fret. I'm going to hammer up a full step on the D string. And then strike together a double stop, G string and B string. Okay, I need to do that two times. Before sliding away on the D string. Okay, you put all that together and we have, starting from measure number one. Okay, now moving on to our fifth and final riff, Red House. Now this one is very traditional, but it's going to incorporate some very useful techniques, specifically this idea of moving caged dominant seven shapes. It's gonna look and sound like this. One, two, three, one, two, three. Okay, breaking that down. We're starting off grabbing the 11th fret of the G string, 10th fret of the B, and the 11th fret high E string. This is like a D7 type chord shape transposed up to the key of B. All right, we're just gonna go back and forth between the G string and the B string and high E string together. All right, to do it like Hendrix, you can slide up into the position. Take that down a half step and do the exact same thing. All right, from there we're going to go B power chord, nice and short. Now, I'm simplifying this little section because if you're listening to the original track and slowing it down, you'll notice that there's not an exact pattern. He kind of hits some random strings a little bit. But kind of boiling it down and making it easier to teach, that's a great way to play it. One more time. All right, from there we're gonna get into this lick. We're gonna divide it up into three parts. Looks and sounds like this. Okay, breaking that up into three easy to learn chunks. Chunk number one, we're just grabbing the 10th fret of the B string and bending it up three times. All right, that's a great opportunity to practice bending and vibratoing at the same time. All right, now chunk number two is gonna look and sound like this. All right, once again, I'm on the 10th fret of the B string, bending up and returning. We need to do that twice, so. Now, same rhythm, different notes. Ninth fret of the G string, bending up, and then the seventh fret of the B string. You put that chunk together and we have. Now chunks one and two. All right, now the third chunk is gonna look and sound like this, gets a little tricky.
Okay, so that gets a little tricky. I'm picturing the B minor pentatonic scale. Or the blues scale. All right, I'm playing. Seventh fret high E string. Pulling off 10 down to seven on the B. Then nine, seven on the high E string. So far you have. All right, now 10 down to seven on the B string. And then a quick bend on the G string ninth fret. That's gonna be a quarter note. So you put that together, so far we have. Now we're gonna finish up with. All right, very simple. Seventh fret of the G string. Then up a full step, bend in. And then back to seven with some heavy vibrato. All right, as the chord progression comes in. All right, that last lick. Right. And the entire riff or intro should look like this. Just like that. All right, everybody, thanks so much for checking out this Jimi Hendrix tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know what you think in the comment section down below. And as always, big thanks to my supporters at patreon.com slash swiftlessons. I hope you're enjoying all those extra resources. Thanks to you guys, I've got many more lessons coming up, so keep checking in. Please subscribe, please share. This is Rob coming to you from Summers Point, New Jersey, saying happy picking.